Statistics and Excel, combining two histograms on one chart, part number one. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem, blank tab just having the data within it so we can practice formatting cells as we work through the practice problem. Also note, if you don't have access to the data set, you can take a look at Kaggle, K-A-G-G-L-E dot com as a source to look for some sample data sets. This one's related to height. We're gonna go to the tab on the left, the example tab, to get an idea of what we will be doing. We'll format our data into a table, calculate the average, and then we'll make a histogram from that data. Given the fact that it's data about height, we would expect it to be somewhat bell-shaped uh, as it is here. Then in order to put two sets of data together, we're gonna recreate our histogram with a bar type chart. So we'll format it in this format so we can play, make a bar chart, the bar chart being easier to overlay another chart on top of. And then we'll take our current data set and we'll kind of imagine that this is for men, and then we'll do another calculation to make a similar data set for women, just so we have some numbers to practice with. And then we could imagine that if we put those two data sets together, it would look something like this. But what we really want to do is try to create something like this. So now you've got basically the two histograms that you can see are distinct from each other and kind of offsetted uh, as we can see here. All right, so let's go to the blank tab. We'll build this in a, in a few presentations. I'm gonna get rid of this Kaggle in the middle here. And let's start off by just uh, formatting our entire worksheet. That's our, that's our starting point typically. So I will then select the tab up top, uh, the triangle, right click on the worksheet on the highlighted or selected area, format the cells. I'm gonna go into the currency negative numbers to be bracketed and red, get rid of the dollar sign. And here you'll note that there's multiple decimal places. So maybe I wanna keep the decimal, but I'll round it to two decimal places, which will round off some of these numbers simply to do two decimals. So I'm gonna say, okay, that looks good. Then I'll bold the whole thing, home tab, font group, and embolden the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna hold control and scroll up a little bit. So I'm currently at 265 on the zoom in. Now I'm gonna create a table around our data set. So I'm gonna to go to the insert tab to do that, tables and create a table. And so it's selecting the entire data set with the dancing ants doing a mamba around it. You can't see, again, you can't see their hips shaking or anything, but if you were to zoom in, they're totally, uh, their hips are shaking and they're like, they're getting into it when they're dancing. So just, it's not like a march. You would think they're marching, but they're not. They're totally into, they're totally like dancing. Any case, I'm gonna put a space in between these two. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and then wrap the text up top. So we're gonna to go to the home tab and uh, alignment. Let's wrap the text and center it, alignment and center. So now we could sort the data if we wanted to. And, uh, and this is, we have a fairly long data set. Notice that this is a pretty extended amount of a sample of uh, data. So it's still a sample you know, of data. So we're taking all of this data set uh, as, as a sample of data. And if we had, it's down to uh, 25,000 know, out of the population, right, uh, of a population. So if we take that, and we make a histogram from it. So I'm just gonna select the whole data set by putting my cursor on the dropdown. Now I've got all the data selected and we can go to the histogram we've seen in the past. Just go to the insert tab, charts group, drop down on the histogram and we want a histogram. Boom, and it makes a pretty nice uh, histogram here. I'm gonna get rid of the title and then as we would expect with data like this, that's about, I'm gonna make it a little larger, height, 
we get a nice distribution because we have a very large you know sample of data that that we have so we've got the buckets that have been made down below so we've got our our uh buckets and so 60.28 to 60.51 i believe these are in inches so if you wanted to you know divide by 12 to get the feet or whatever so if we wanted to convert to feet you know and and so the so this middle point seems to be around 68 so so again if you wanted to convert this to feet it'd be something like 60 uh 68 divided by 12 you know 5.67 uh, so in any case uh that's here so all right so then so now note when i when i look at this plot it's difficult to add another data set basically on top of this one right if i select the entire data set then then you know, I can add another set of data set in it, but I, if I want to lie something on top of it, it might be useful to uh, for us to format the data in such a way that we can make a a uh, a bar type of of uh, a column chart instead of a histogram. So we want to make a histogram using this tool instead of this tool, and then we'll be able to possibly put the two uh, sets of data on top of each other. So let's first think about how to do that. How can I recreate this histogram? Well, I can I can look at my data sets down here. I'm gonna make a skinny B column. Let's make a skinny B. And I'm gonna make this a little bit wider. And I'm gonna mirror my buckets down here. So I've got the buckets from 6028 to 6051, and then uh, 60.74 to 60.97. We could change those bucket sizes, by the way, by clicking on the histogram and then adjust the bend width if we so choose, which is currently at 0.23 difference, and we have 65 bends. So let's imagine down here that I'm gonna have then, let's do one more down, I'm gonna say 60.28, and then it's going to uh, 60.51. So I'm just copying this 60.28 to 60.51. And then the bend width we can see is 23, difference so if i go up this is going to be equal to the one above it plus 0.23 should give us to uh, the 6051 which is basically the ending bucket over here and then i'm going to do the same thing this way i'm going to say this equals this uh, plus 20.23 and so i'm going to select those two and copy them down and so now I've got now I've got the 6074 here to the 6097. And so if I keep copying that down, I want to copy it down.